month of August. Um, it took a while to compile because it went from customs to Calcutta and back. So we have compiled it. Uh, so I will first give you the data as it is. And then I'll give you the details of what is growing, what is not growing, etc. So the first point is the merchandise exports for August are flat. Flat. They are 33 billion. The 33 billion last August. It's 33 billion this August. I'm not going into the decimal places, but broadly that's it. It's flat. The merchandise exports for the entire period, which is five months, is 192 billion. 192 billion from April to August, that is for this financial year, it's up by 17.1%, 17.1%. And the exports, non-gems and jewelry, and non-petroleum are 135 billion, which is up 8.5%. Services exports are rocking. They have crossed 98 billion, and we are uh, 95 billion and they are on track to break all records this year. So how are we, uh, and services data is for 4 months because RBI data comes 1 month late. So April to July services is 95 billion which is a rise of 26 billion. So what is the big news today is as we see we are now a pretty good handle on what's happening globally. We are being buffeted by strong winds globally. We have the disruptions that have happened because of Ukraine and Russia. We are very aware of the high inflation rates. We are aware of the actions being taken by uh, various central banks across the world. You have heard the US Fed Chief Speaker Jackson about a week ago. And to control inflation, you are seeing what is happening to interest rates around the world. In the middle of all this, the good thing is that Indian exports are holding ground. They are 17% plus, which is among the best in the world. On current trends, and after a very detailed analysis, on a very conservative basis, Indian exports this year will cross $750 billion. This will be higher than last year. It will be a record. Last year, we had kept a target of $400 billion for boots. We did 422 and services was 260 odd billion. So the total was something like 660 or something, 676. This year we will be crossing 750 billion comfortably. So for goods, what's the number? Yeah, for services, we will be crossing 350, uh, 300 billion. We already crossed 98 billion in uh, four months and goods, we will be crossing 450 billion. This is the lower bound. Our own internal target is 470. But what I'm giving you is a conservative figure. So in the 75th year of independence, we will be having exports of 750 billion, which is much higher than past trend and much higher than last year also. Coming back to the data, now I'm going into the details. Although I Exports are flat in August. It's an increase of 17%. Some sectors are doing phenomenally well. The sectors which are doing phenomenally well are electronic goods. It's a jump of 50%. Rice is doing extremely well. It's a jump of 42%. Chemicals are doing well, roughly about 14%. These are some of the sectors which are doing extremely well. I'll, I'll just read out some more plastics and other resins are doing extremely well. So I think that's an important point to note that the Akhanebhar push which the Prime Minister is giving, electronics, chemicals, etc., that's doing exceedingly well. There are headwinds. The headwinds are in the nature of what is likely to happen in the developed country markets. <coughs> what is going to happen to Christmas orders. The important news is all our exporters, their order books are full. But orders are getting delayed in terms of execution. So they're not being asked to be shipped. So I think that is the uncertainty that is there. Probably in a month's time, we'll get to know that. Having factored all this into account, I think we are still confident that we will touch 750 billion, 450 in goods, and 300 in services. That's the big takeaway today. 
that we will actually reach these targets. Uh, the exports of textiles are running into some headwinds, but the Australian FTA has already been put into the parliament and it should get passed in a month's time, in the end of September, and we hope to see a pickup there. You are already reading the news about UAE. There's a big jump in jewelry exports of 50% in just two months, May and June. So we expect exports to pick up to these and also many new countries, non-traditional countries like Indonesia, Brazil, South Africa, Australia, France. They're showing huge growth of over 30%. So I think we will have to keep pushing into newer markets and sustain that momentum. Now, what is the reason for the flat uh, growth in exports. You must understand that because of inflation, to ensure controlling inflation in India and ensure adequate availability of certain products, we have put some restrictions. You are aware that wheat has almost gone into a negative list. It is a prohibited item except for some food security things for some neighboring countries. We have put serious restrictions on steel exports, steel as well as, I don't know, pellets. That has gone into a negative list. Some other products have also got, you know, export duties. Plus, iron ore also was put under restrictions last year. So all this collectively has led to a certain flattening of exports in those sectors, including a decline. And when we release the data, you will see it yourself, because all the data is being given out just now after this uh, press conference. Secondly, imports are also rising, and uh, the figures I have as far as imports are concerned is that imports in August are 61.68 billion, 61.68 billion. That's a rise of 37%. And over five months, imports have risen by, um, like the imports are 318 billion, 318 billion. That's a rise of 45%. And when we actually look into it, Two major areas in which imports are actually rising are one is petroleum products and the other is coal, coke and briquettes. Uh, there are two parts to it. One, there has been a price inflation in these products. Two, there is also some stocking up going on to ensure uh, energy security in the country. You are aware of that coal imports were asked to be increased a couple of months ago to ensure adequate coal supply for power plants in the rainy season. So I think that led to a spike in those imports. The other factor as far as imports are concerned, is when you get the data you will understand, about 25% of India's imports are consumer items. 75% is either raw materials or intermediates. So we are pulling in imports is a good sign that the economy is growing fast. So actually a rise in imports per se is not a concern because it actually shows that imports are feeding into our domestic economy which is growing fast. The counter is we need to push exports more and I am confident that is happening and we see the totality, I think it is quite satisfactory. I am particularly happy about agricultural exports which has done extremely well. Uh, it is ahead of our targets and meat is doing extremely well, marine products are doing extremely well, cereal preparations are doing well. Coffee is doing extremely well and uh, Coffee Board tells me that you know it's going to be a jump of at least 35-40% this year in coffee exports. Tea is also doing well. So that's as far as individual products and their exports are concerned. On the services side, services are doing at the rate of about 25 billion a month. We have done 95 billion in 4 months. And we are on target to cross 300. My internal figures say 301 billion. So we say, okay, roughly 300 billion will get in services. Uh, last year, whatever services we did, they did not have transport or travel. That has got restored. You have seen what's happening in the airports. You know, that choke. So I'm sure with all that coming in, our services exports are also going to boom. If you look at it in totality, I mean, where are we had, headed as far as trade is concerned at the end of the year? Our estimation is, if you see the trade in goods and services, just the trade deficit, we are probably going to be in the range of 160 to 180 billion dollars at the end of the year. And this is based on our projections. We are putting exports on the conservative side and imports on the higher side. 
we also have going to have remittance in about 90 billion dollars. So, okay, the trade deficit, the trade trade balance in goods and services is going to be in the range of 160 to 180 billion dollars. Goods alone, I'm not because I've totaled up the two of them, and we're going to have remittances of about 90 billion dollars. So, if you look at other elements, and we are not going into the details, if you look at the current account deficit, it will be somewhere around the range of 3%. Now, 3% isn't something that is bad, but it's something we need to be careful about. We need to take measures, and I'm sure the government is quite actively engaged. However, I think the primary concern currently is inflation. Some lifting is done by RBI, some lifting has to be done by government. And so some of the measures we take for inflation will hit our exports, which will also hit our trade balance. So I think given this scenario, given that the restrictions are there, we are not in a very uncomfortable situation. Over to all of you. So the port is 45% up for 318 plus 21. 45% up 